Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our annual Tenebrae service, a service of silence and shadows here on Good Friday. Each year at the beginning of the Tenebrae service, I stand up in front of you and say a couple of things. I always say how grateful I am to the choir and to all the people who pull this off. And let me say again, I am grateful to the folks who make all of this possible, to the pastors and the volunteers who have made an online experience like this possible. I'm very grateful. The other thing I would typically say, I'm, I'm going to say again, I ask everyone to get out their cell phones and I ask them to turn them to silent or to turn them off because there is an experience here that we all need that needs to be protected. And I would encourage you tonight to protect the experience again. Please turn your cell phones off. Try to limit the distractions. You might even turn the lights down a little bit because at the end of this, the silence speaks volumes. And maybe the darkness and the silence will tell us what we need to hear tonight, that this death that Jesus suffered is very real, it's tragic, and the only way that Jesus saw fit to go through all of this was because of his heart for us. So to honor that passion and to honor that commitment, would you allow at the end of this service, at the end of this experience, will you allow there to be some darkness and some silence? How long should we stay silent, John? I don't know. I don't know, as long as you feel like you need to in order to let this whole experience sink in. We are going to gather again on Easter Sunday morning, but in order for that brightness to be as bright as it needs to be, this darkness needs to be as dark as it needs to be. I'm praying for us tonight that we will not skip over Good Friday or Black Friday, that we will not skip over the death and the suffering of Christ to get all the way to the resurrection, I'm praying for us that we will understand at some level what it is that this Jesus went through because of love, because of love. I hope you find this experience meaningful. Father in heaven, as evening descends, we remember the darkness that descended on that day when our Lord gave his life to accomplish the perfect will of his Father. We recall the awful gift that he willingly gave, even though we were undeserving. As evening descends, we ask for direction and power from the Holy Spirit. As evening descends, we look to the morning, the promise of light, and the promise of life.
He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by him, and apart from him nothing came into being that was come into being. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. God spoke light, and there was light. God reached out and formed the mountains, the valleys, the waters, the skies. He created by his will the stars, the planets, and the earth, full of his whimsy, full of his character full of his colorful art and overflowing with his love. He carved every animal that roams, darts about, soars on the wind, and dances in the sea. And finally, carefully, lovingly, he created man. This is my Father's world, and to my listening all nature sings and now he reads the music and the sings. This is my Father's world. Oh, 
He said, we will make beings that are like us, and they will walk with us side by side. We will talk in the cool of the evening and sing in the first light of day. And he did make them, male and female, his first children, Adam and Eve. Every fiber of their bodies bore his signature. And so, by living and breathing, walking and singing, they praised his name. beside God in the garden until, by their own choice, they believed in the great lie of the serpent and fell into a new world of sin. The same story has been repeated over and over since then. The same story has been repeated over and over since then. Although God's love is unchanging and unmoving, his children chose to turn away from his love and protection. God tried time and time again to call them back to the relationship established in the garden. There was always someone who heard the voice of God. People such as Noah, builder of the ark, and Job, a worthy and righteous man who did not succumb to the lies and temptations of Satan. God raised up a mighty nation through the servant of God, Abraham. The nation of Israel had many great hearers and doers of the law. Moses, who led the Israelites out of bondage, and Joshua, who led the people of Israel to the promised land of Canaan. Samuel, the prophet and priest, the great king, shepherd, and poet David, and his son, Solomon the Wise. And though there was turmoil, God was faithful from beginning to end.
divided into two kingdoms. They became politically and spiritually weak because of the influence of idol worship. But still, a faint light of truth could be seen through the curtains of history. The flame was kindled because of the obedience of such prophets as Elijah, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. Eventually, the weakened kingdoms did fall, and the people of Israel were captives in a foreign land, the lands of Assyria and Babylon. But even there, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not forget them. The people heard their father's voice through his prophet Ezekiel, saw the example of his servant Daniel, and the miracle that he worked through the great queen Esther. Eventually, some of the captives returned to the city of Jerusalem and rebuilt the city and the holy temple. Led and inspired by Ezra and Nehemiah, through whom the Lord made his voice known. So God the Father continued to make his love known among the people, to show them the way to his open arms, to his waiting side. And he promised, through the prophets, an even more perfect way to bridge the gap caused by sin. He promised that he would send a child, indeed his son. The prophet Isaiah wrote the words of the Lord. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us.
years of waiting ended as John the Baptist walked out of the wilderness, preaching, teaching, beckoning, and baptizing, proclaiming the coming of Christ and the fulfillment of the prophecies. Again, the voice of God was heard through the prophets. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is calling. Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. On a clear night outside of Bethlehem, into the home of Joseph the carpenter and his wife Mary, came the cry of the tiny baby they named Jesus. Shepherds heard the angels sing, starlight led the kings. Let all the earth rejoice, angels lift your voices, sing Noel, Noel. Sing we Noel, Noel. Jesus lived in obscurity for 30 years. But when he followed John the Baptist into the Judean countryside, all of history was changed. He chose 12 extraordinary men to be his disciples. They came from all walks of life and every class in society. There was Matthew, a tax collector, Peter, the rock, Andrew, James, and John, fishermen. 
There was Simon the Zealot, a revolutionary, and Thomas, Philip, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, James the son of Alphaeus, and Judas Iscariot. For three years, Jesus taught these men, worked and lived with these men, and gave the ministry over to them, instructing them on how and where to go when he was gone. Christ's ministry on earth. The rulers of the church set out to capture Jesus. They laid their plans by purchasing Judas' betrayal of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. They paid Judas the sum equivalent to the price of a common slave, 30 pieces of silver. Jesus gathered with his disciples, the ones that he now called friends. In a room set apart from the noise of Jerusalem, they celebrated the age-old feast of the Passover. Only this time, the script was changed. Jesus took the familiar words and gave them new life and new meaning. He took the familiar bread and cup and with them introduced himself as the final sacrifice, the last Passover lamb. And even though his disciples did not fully comprehend what was happening to him, to them, and the world, they did realize that their hearts and their lives were forever changed. Sing to please. 
The soldiers dragged Jesus away, and when his disciples saw what had happened, they scattered. Peter stayed behind at a safe distance, but even he denied that he was a follower of Christ. Jesus was brought before the high priests, the Sanhedrin, and in an illegal trial, held at night, behind closed doors, he was accused and mocked. Jesus was then taken to Pontius Pilate and Herod. He was abused by the Roman guards, slapped, spit upon, and was made to wear a crown woven of thorns. Finally, he was sentenced to death by crucifixion and was paraded down the winding road to the mount called the Place of the Skull. He was nailed by his hands and his feet to a wooden cross. For my cross and for my crown did the King of Heaven for my sin and for my shame did he suffer guilt and pain for a slave i am no more but by choice i am the lord's once in chains i was set free when my savior died for his clothing as the crowds mocked and laughed at him. He turned his head to his tormentors and asked his father to forgive them. In pain and anguish of spirit, he cried out in a loud voice. The sun grew dark. He bowed his head and died. 